it's not always easy to keep track of my money and to be sure that the amount that I earn equals the amount that I spend. Balancing my budget gets tricky. Today, we're going to find out how that money isn't the only thing that's tricky to balance in a budget. Atmospheric scientists worry about balancing Earth's radiation budget. We'll talk about that next on Real World. Everyone knows Earth gets its energy from the sun. Keeping track of all that energy is really important. NASA uses Ceres, a data collecting sensor on satellites that are part of the Earth observing system. Ceres measures the amount of energy the Earth receives and also the amount of energy it returns back into space. The name Ceres is an acronym. It stands for Clouds in the Earth's Radiant Energy System. It's also the name of the Roman goddess of agriculture. Ideally, the amount of energy coming to and leaving Earth should be the same, equal, giving us a balanced radiation budget. And that would mean Earth's surface is neither cooling nor warming from year to year. The energy coming from the sun is visible light, or shortwave radiation, and much of it never reaches the surface of the Earth. In fact, about 50% is actually reflected back into space or absorbed by our atmosphere and clouds. Do the math. That leaves only about 50% of the energy to be absorbed by land and the oceans. Darker surfaces tend to absorb more energy. So places where there are oceans and rainforests absorb a lot of the sun's radiation, around 75% for the oceans and 85% for the rainforests. But lighter areas, like deserts and polar regions, are reflective, and thus absorb smaller portions of the sun's energy. Around 65% for deserts and 15-60% to for the polar regions. The energy that is absorbed by Earth's surface is converted to heat or long-wave energy, and then sent back out towards space. But not all of that energy makes it back to space. Some of it gets trapped by the atmosphere, creating the greenhouse effect, and it makes Earth warmer than it would be without the atmosphere. The Ceres instrument carefully measures the total energy leaving the Earth. Data gathered by Ceres sensors suggest Earth may be warming up even more due to changes in the atmosphere. We're looking at how clouds interact with sunlight in the Earth system and with heat. Lynn Chambers is a member of NASA's Ceres science team. We already have pretty good indications that there is an imbalance in the energy in versus the energy out. This is caused by the increase of greenhouse gases, which include carbon dioxide, methane, and other trace gases. The scientific information is pretty compelling that if you add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, you expect to see a warming, and we do see indications of that warming. You may have heard talk about a carbon footprint. What's a carbon footprint? That's simply the amount of greenhouse gases created due to human activity, like driving a car, and how those gases affect our atmosphere. For example, the average car adds around 5,000 kilograms of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere each year. That's five metric tons. Our carbon footprints are causing the polar caps to melt, and that's leading to an increase in temperatures. Remember? Dark surfaces like the ocean absorb heat and energy, while the lighter surfaces like the polar ice caps actually reflect it. Less ice, more ocean, more heat absorbed. So. When you think about your own budget, try to think about Earth's radiation budget and try to keep both balanced. You can find out more about the series program by going to www.nasa.gov and searching for school. That's NASA's Students Cloud Observation Online Project.